that's got like the texture of Vaseline and tastes of plastic. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are doing well. Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, you might be able to hear. The dogs are just having their breakfast. But whilst Amy is uh, finishing up, she is the slowest eater of the two, but she likes to savour the flavour, if you will. Uh, let's rewind to yesterday when I popped to McDonald's. Hi there, can I get uh, three portions of fries, please? Large ones. In case you haven't guessed it, today's video is all about French fries. Thank you, cheers. You too, thank you. <laughs> yes, there we go, the classic. Might as well have one warm one because the other's going to be cold. So I'm enjoying my french fries. Um, now I've got to go in the shop with my mask on, um, get some ingredients. Today I am making actually one of the most requested videos I have ever been asked to do and I've put it off for ages. Homemade McDonald's french fries. All right, so this was last night. I did eat one portion because I, I'm going to need one of these for my thumbnail, but I bought two uh, extra ones because, as you know, when that's a stereotypical thing, isn't it? When you look at the picture, like, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. I know the uh, photographer for McDonald's, by the way, in the UK. He's amazing. Uh, but you know, it's never completely full, so I needed to buy an extra set to make it look nice and glorious to compare it against with mine. But don't, don't eat a cold chip, no. I'm going to put a video up here, uh, this is one I mentioned about the other day where I actually did a sponsored video for McDonald's, this one isn't today, where I basically learnt how chicken nuggets were made and fries and it was a really, really interesting day and video if you haven't seen it. Um, but on that day, I, when I went and learnt about how the potatoes were sort of uh, harvested, we got up on a tractor and it was just really cool and I grilled the farmer so, so much. So I got as much information as I could. So based on what I was told, this is how I'm going to do it and fingers crossed, it's gonna work out rather stonking indeed. Now, believe it or not, the first bombshell fact I found out is that McDonald's fries don't actually contain any potato. They're made with real pug. No, they're not. Uh, they're actually made by a variety of different potatoes. The farmer told me that. He said they actually get them from all over the UK. It depends like at the time of year and the, how they've sort of grown and stuff. They can sometimes be a medley, but the most popular one is a russet potato because it's perfect for making a chip. So this starch-filled blob is going to hopefully become a McDonald's french fry like that now. <laughs> it's a little bit sad, this one, because it's cold, but I can use this to get the dimensions right because they are fairly accurate. I mean, they're just going to chuck them through a massive chip maker, which will just get the fries this exact same shape every single time. I reviewed a gadget like that, but we'll do it by hand. Now, normally, um, in fact, the... go! What's that? Go! But the actual length of the fries, I'm sure they used to be, I mean, they, they've got shorter. Doesn't matter, we can use this board. I mean, you don't have to do this. I'm gonna measure them right now to get them just right. So, yes, a McDonald's fry is a quarter of an inch, typically, square all the way around. So that means we've gotta turn this into this lots of times. So what I'll do is uh, we'll peel this down to give it as much opportunity as possible. I personally, my favorite type of fries or chips, whatever you want to call them, are when the skin is on. But I'm going to just try and get rid of all the nasty bits, just so it's going to be nice and smooth. Uh, Barry Lewis peeler optional, by the way, but there we go, it's nice and smooth. Oh no, it's not, see? Even these little blemishes like that, you can just get those off if you want. And I can feel the starch on that as well. We'll come on to that in a minute. So we're just going to try and give ourselves a nice sort of flat, disc to work with, but then you have to go down the sides as well. So you actually lose quite a lot of potato. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is cut it down in those quarter inch dimensions into almost like credit card shapes, which is still not perfect, all right? We can tidy that up. Now this is completely overkill, but I'm just trying to get them nice and symmetrical, okay? So I've got pretty much a perfect square there, apart from that little kink on the end, uh, that should give us some nice even sized fries. If I line that up and go down, and then down for the next quarter of an inch, and you can see, ah, oh, it's working. It takes a long time, but it's worth it. There we go, looking rather stonking indeed, aren't they? Nice and consistent in size, that was one potato. So we've obviously got to repeat this now, but oh, not me. My epic Friday night last night, I party hard. I sliced two potatoes. This is two more potatoes, so that's three in total. And you can see that's at least two sizes of large fries from McDonald's, so that's three potatoes. You can see 
while, while they're, you know, they're doing well for themselves. All right, so this is a brownie tray that I'm gonna fill up with some water. That's me filling it up with water. All right. Now this is good for any chip, okay? This is basically getting rid of the starch. So we're gonna have to wash it out. Look, if I just mix this around, look how murky that water has gone. That is the starch from the potatoes. Wow. Look how different that is. So I always do that even when I do, we, we normally make oven chips whenever we have homemade chips at home. We don't tend to fry them, but that really does make a difference. So this is what I was told by the farmer. <laughs> Apparently the fries are plunged into cold water, so we've already got the cold water here, with some sugar. Now I guess if you don't have sugar, I mean you should do. Everyone's got sugar, why well, didn't say that? As you can see, we just stir that in, let it dissolve, and we submerge these in this water, in this brine, for an hour. Let's stick it in the for an hour, just to soak. Whilst that's in the fridge, my mother-in-law made me a homemade face mask. I got this this morning, look at that. <laughs> It actually colour coordinates with my t-shirt. Please wear a mask. All right, so that has nearly been an hour in there and we're now reverting back to where I feel comfortable. This is how I normally make chips without the sugary brine thing. So first thing I'm doing is half filling a saucepan with water. So we're just bringing that up to a simmer. Once it hits that point, the potatoes are gonna go in there. Those rectangles are gonna get softened. Do not boil them for too long, otherwise you'll end up with like mashed potato, which is fine. We're not, this video isn't mashed potato. But the point is we soften those rectangles, we get them nice and delicate inside so when we get that crispy outside, you've still got that soft, fluffy, cooked middle. Mm. I'm excited. All right, we have got a nice rolling simmer on there now and I have drained off the potatoes. Uh, so I'm gonna just chuck them in a little bit at a time. So that's them in there and you can see, like I say, that has shocked the water. So where it was simmering before, it will come up quite quickly, but the, the coldness of these potatoes will actually like make it cooler. It's great. Uh, so it gives us a bit more time to cook them and keep our eye on it. And also the fact that there's no starch in there now, it will stop them sticking together as well. Pushing them around the pan like this can be very therapeutic, but don't do it, okay? Because they're so thin, they're gonna soften very quickly indeed. So if you start pushing them too much, you'll snap them and basically you just ruin all the progress. So we'll scoop one out from the middle, make sure it's softened enough, and then we can move on. I'm not sure if this is true, but apparently if you go into McDonald's and you want a fresh batch of cooked fries, uh, you can ask for them with no salt on. But the process they do anyway, which we'll talk about in a minute, they kind of cook them fresh anyway. I think maybe people mean that by doing that you get it pretty much literally you know it's just been put in the fryer and not sat there for at least 30 seconds because I think that's the sort of turnaround they have but look this is the chips done now you can see how it's got a slight bend in it for me that is enough because it's wobbling any more than that and it will start to snap oh see we've got a casualty be careful once these were all in here there was a lot of steam coming off you can let it go to room temperature or just run it under a cold tap like I just did and tip out as much water as you can there we go that's actually strengthened quite a bit already but now we strengthen them even more so we go on to the fridge process if you can imagine it's kind of like when a cake when you freshly bake a cake and it's warm and sort of loose and as it chills and cools down it firms up that's exactly the same principle for these okay get some of the moisture out and we'll shove these in the fridge. I'm gonna get used to this fridge. <laughs> this is basically what happens with a lot of restaurants, not just fast food, it's a certain dishes. They make it externally off site or other companies literally do that whole process for them. And so then when you go into the restaurant or the drive through or just walk in, whatever, they just have to do flash fry, you know, just very, very quickly. Look at it when you go into a restaurant and you see like authentic slow cooked pulled pork for eight hours and you get it in five minutes. We've all been to one of those pubs. Just how the world works. People want fast food and this is it. So they do all of this stage. And the next bit we're gonna do is that bit that they would do in the factory too, the first stage of frying. You know what I mean about the pulled pork thing though, right? It's like eight hours and it probably is cooked that long in a huge vat off site, but then it's just bunged in a microwave in the pub. <laughs> For the first fry, the softened rectangles are gonna have a kind of sealed layer, <laughs> layer of oil around it to encase the softness in and give it that first batch of crispiness. Again, this bit is done off site. I'm using the same pan again to uh, save on washing up. Uh, basically, and it's also the biggest pan I've got. I did have a deep fat fryer, it is somewhere, but I genuinely hate using it. I just hate frying stuff, and the, that temptation of having it there, I just wanted to remove that, so I've, I've hidden it well. 
These are out of the fridge then. They are actually quite nice to touch. They're kind of like little ice lollies because they're so cold. Make sure they're nice and dry. The oil, I think, is ready. We're going to take our time with it. And I've also got another chopping board here with a kitchen towel to drain it off once they're done. So these are frying away lovely. I've um, been very careful, but they are not done yet. You can't see any tinges, any sort of indication that they're crisping up yet. And that is what you want, just a nice outer layer. When it comes to filming with oil, I, I just do not want to hurt myself. Uh, but I don't know if you can see, I've got a very slight outer skin on there now. So I'm going to get them all out back onto the kitchen towel safely. All right, so I'm patting them dry. Uh, and <laughs> they've got this lovely little skin on them now. And this is the stage where they would be frozen and then ready to be shipped to the restaurants. But in our case, they're going back in the fridge. All right, I've got some leftover that were brined and haven't been fried at all. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stick them in the oven and I'm gonna bake them like I would normally with oven chips. Although normally I blast them and get I like a nice charness on there. I'm gonna try and get that golden color and we'll see if there's any comparison whatsoever. Now, the only other thing I've done is I took the oil from that pan, passed it for a sieve into another pan just to give it a good old clean. And I was also told that for the fry they do in the restaurants, they do have a little extra special ingredient. Yes, that ingredient is dripping. Beef dripping or lard, basically like just a slab of fat. Of fat. Isn't it from up north? I'll have some bread and dripping on my toast, please. But it's like this. <laughs> it's just like a big slab. No, it's got like the texture of Vaseline and tastes of plastic. But apparently this going in the oil, which it will just melt through, it's be fine. It's a fat that will probably cling and flavor the fries. So just let that mix in. And apparently that does help flavor the fries. A little bit overkill, but that's what I've been told. All right then folks, so they're out the fridge waiting. I've got a little mini frying basket there, but I actually do have two of them. So here we go. I'm gonna just plunge them in. Du -du 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 -du. And I'm doing these in very small batches, just so I've got a bit more control. And we're gonna fry these until we get that lovely golden brown color. I think it's done. This little basket is being amazing. <laughs> it's my bodged fryer, but I really, really didn't want to use a real one. If you haven't got one of those, you could probably use a sieve as well. Oh. Can you see that? Oh. We have nailed the color. That is, ah, oh. very good. Before cooking, look, look at it. Yes, just enough color. Right, we've got to get these done so they stay warm for the final salting. Yeah, just did it with the sieve and that works just as well. Okay, so this is some fine salt. So I'm going for about, well, a tablespoon. That's actually really fun. <laughs> so they're nice and coated. We're done. The kids have just got back. All right, Mrs. B? Hello. Oh. <laughs> Stinks of McDonald's. Well, that's a good thing. Is it? Right. Oh. <laughs> I was about to show you that I've done the homemade ones. That's all the, that's with the two potatoes that I use, just two potatoes. And that's two portions of large fries from McDonald's to try and make it look like it does in the posters and stuff like that. Sorry, Miles, if you're watching. Quite a difference there. Obviously these are stone cold and I don't want to eat them again. Do you want to try cold McDonald's? No. No? no. There is a slight, this is slightly paler, a little tinge of color. They do smell rather stonking indeed. Welcome to McBerry's. Can I take your order, please? Um, please may we have some McBerry's fries? Lunch yes. fries, please. That's because all we do. That's all we do. Um, and eat those, not those. <laughs> Trust me. A one-word review from Phoebe. Delicious. Stonkin. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> They're an in for more. Is there, like, any texture there or anything? Oh. They're very thin. Very oh, yeah. crunchy. Which is good. But soft in the middle still, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, very. They taste better than McDonald's. Yeah, they're actually nice. There is real crispness there, real softness. And if you want to see me doing some more McDonald's recipes, I've done a few like an egg McMuffin and a McRib, which is probably one of my favourite teams ever. McChicken sandwich. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for regular videos. Follow me on social media for behind the scenes bits and bobs. Let me know down below what you want to see next. And <laughs> they've eaten them all. Have <laughs> you eaten them all? You rats. <laughs> right, as a punishment, have a cold one. Go um, on. No, 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 no. Go on, I know you would. Oh, no, you go on then. Very hot. I don't have to keep eating it. You can just take one bite, mm. you know.
They're quite hard to bite into. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's basically edible starch. Did you want any? I, did, I didn't want any, no, to be honest, it's such an effort to make them. Oh. <laughs> See you next time, bye. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Oh, and for reference, these are the oven chip ones. I took my eye off them while I was frying, but this is the colour that I normally make my oven chips to. Oh, really crispy with that soft centre, but a completely different taste to what this is going to be.